All right, guys. Well, I have here a Volkswagen uh, 09A uh, out, of, out of a Volkswagen uh, Jetta. And uh, it's very important that uh, whenever you get one of these units, you have to match up the code. This is an EYP code. Uh, this is for a friend of mine that has a uh, body shop and he buys and sells cars. And one of his uh, customers, uh, he has two units like this. And he wanted to put that other unit that he has, but it's a different code, so it's not going to work. Uh, in other words, he wanted to make that car work uh, so he can, you know, sell it. So uh, we're, we're going to do a basic teardown on this uh, transmission here and see what we're going to be able to find uh, here. Uh, as you can see here already, that they probably added or put some type of an additive. As you can see right here, this is the pump, and here it has a pump O-ring, and... I mean, I see right here that he was leaking out of the pump O-ring. So he was leaking out the front, and it looks kind of weird, you know, kind of weird looking, you know, the fluid that's coming out of there. So he was leaking out of there. Uh, I'm not sure how many miles are on this car. Uh, told him to, uh, he brought me the unit already, uh, you know, off the car. I told him to send me the uh, trouble codes, you know, to more or less give me an idea of what's going on with this unit. There are three speed sensors on this unit. Two of them are inside on the front one of them it's in the back but all three are internal all three uh, bushings are in uh, um, bushings uh, speed sensors are inside the transmission and if you have a trouble code for a speed sensor which is very common you have to pull the transmission out and you know completely disassemble it especially the ones uh, here which the vehicle speed sensor it's uh, it's in the front over here all right, well, uh, let's go ahead and uh, begin here, turn this thing down. Uh, how do you put fluid in this transmission? Uh, you have a plug here, and on the, on the bottom you have a standpipe uh, for your fluid level. So uh, I, I've had these transmissions here uh, that come in, and they have no reverse, and they take uh, the band anchor bolt. Where's that at? This right here, and they try to put fluid in through here because they can't find the the filler, a little filler tube right here in the front pan. And what that does, you take this off, and the band uh, gets uh, this uh, uh, this anchor, and the band no longer works. You have no reverse. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, take our uh, transmission rain sensor. Let's go ahead and remove that first. It's uh, two tens. I didn't get the ten. Ten millimeter. That's three bolts. This one here is a thirteen. I have a fourteen here, but that'll work. There we go. Take the linkage off. Take the nut out of the way and lift up on the uh, transmission range sensor get that out of the way what we're going to do here we're going to take the valve body off right now before we uh, continue disassembling the unit it's all 10 millimeter bolt turned on so I had to uh, pause you guys for a minute here we have a breather and uh, it's interfering with the bolt just gonna pry that thing off take that last bolt off now we have all of our pan bolts removed making sure it's uh it doesn't have a gasket it's held by silicone 
And whenever you uh, want to take this uh, uh, pans off that are attached with silicone, you want to go where one of the bolts is at. Because if you go in the middle, you're going to raise up the uh, in between the two bolts and you're going to create a leak. So you want to make sure that you, you are at where one of the bolts go into. If that gets raised up a little bit, whenever you uh, uh, retort that bolt, that's going to take care of that issue. There we go. As we see here, this is not the standpipe, this is just the breather. The breather that goes, it has a little baffle here, and it goes through this side, and then it goes up. All right, we're gonna take the valve body off with all without disconnecting anything here. We're gonna disconnect it from over here. Get a little pick. They become very, very brittle, so just be careful. Okay, we disconnect one connector there. Go ahead and disconnect the other connector. To get uh, one of these bolts, we're gonna take all the 10 millimeters that are long. Usually they are white in color. As we see here, we're going to take all the white ones off. This is a ground here. Just make sure that you remember where that ground goes. So we take all the white ones off. And I already see that some of them are not white but usually that's what you would see the white bolts are the one that's going to remove your valve body and as you see here our valve body is already off now we're going to need to take this bolt completely out so that we can leave our pass-through connector on there we're going to remove this as well because this here, this connector here goes to our speed sensors and the other connector goes to our valve body here. One bolt goes here and the one with the bracket goes here. So this is our 09G, no, 09G, 09A valve body. This is a five speed automatic. Get this thing out of the way. So these wires here go to our speed sensors. It is not necessary to remove this at this point, but if you want to remove it, you can go ahead and remove it. We have two seals, one here and one here. This other seal got stuck in the valve body. This one here. That seal, it looks like a little uh, top hat and a regular seal here. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, disassemble everything from the rear. Two 17s and the rest of them are 12. Let's take the two 17s off. They have O-rings, so make sure that when you go back with it, that the O-ring is there. This actually holds a, a, a piece that's like a support that has seating rings where a drums goes onto. So it's very important that this has the uh, O-rings on it, otherwise it'll leak. I usually uh, put the bell housing down whenever I take this off but if I do that you're not going to be able to see in there so it's going to be kind of difficult trying to get this thing out for me at least right now because I have it sideways I just have it like this so that I mean the camera angle so you, you guys can see what I'm doing Last two bolts out. Go ahead and pry it a little bit. It has some locations where you can get your screwdriver. It has one right here, one down here. 
I think that we are going to manage to get this thing out. Volkswagen fluids is yellow and it looks a little bit discolored here. Some, some fluids, they are now coming out red. You go to the dealership and they give you the fluid like for the 09G. It is red. Hmm. They got some, uh, yeah, these are not from here. I haven't taken anything apart. Probably from that other last transmission I, I just did. All right. Let's go ahead and take the end cover off. We have an accumulator here, and there's a seal on the case that we need to make sure that we don't lose it down here. See right there? A seal. This seal is the same as the one on the on this side, not the top hat one, but the other. Now it has a little uh, retainer that holds both pipes here. Usually it breaks all the time. Whenever you try to take one of these pipes, it breaks off. It's not available. So what I do when I go back with these, I just put a tie down and hold them together. That seems to work well with it, with no issues. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pry this uh, pipes off one at a time. I already heard it crack. And actually, it did not break. It usually breaks every time. It holds both pipes together. This time, it didn't break. I'm surprised. Well, one of them didn't, and the other one did. It has two. Go ahead and remove both pipes off, off of it, out of the way. All right. We can see here already one speed sensor. Go ahead and remove this uh, return spring. Well, it's not going to come out until I take the speed sensor off. Let's go ahead and disconnect the speed sensor. You can see two blue wires going into the connector, and we have here a speed sensor. Get our 10 millimeter bolt. This speed sensor is a turbine speed sensor or the input speed sensor. This, if you have enough room to get this cover off, you can probably manage to get it off on the vehicle. All three sensors are the same. This is what it looks like. This is the little hold down bracket for the sensor. Go ahead and get that thing out of the way. Now this return spring can come off. It goes a certain way here because you have to clear for the speed sensor that goes through here. Here we have a third and reverse. Now this unit is also installed on Mazda vehicles like the Mazda MPV and on Mazdas uh, and Jaguars. I have not seen it in uh, Volkswagen yet, but the piston here cracks and it leaks on third and reverse and it burns up the frictions here, uh, especially uh, third gear. It crosses uh, the fluid from one side to the other. Let's check our reverse frictions. They are worn out. They're kind of shaving off. So we need two reverse frictions. And I know he wants to make one unit out of the two units, but the speed sensors, they're going to have to come new. And you're going to see you're going to see why direct. They're a little bit, looks like it was slipping a little bit in third gear. This is the only issue with uh, people that buy and sell cars. I mean, they just want to repair the problem so they can just get rid of the, of the vehicle. They just want to sell it. And we want to check for car parts, make sure nothing is uh, stripped. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit different, difficult for me to uh, get everything out like this on this unit. But it's coming out nicely. We have a sun gear here. We have a planetary gear. And always check them, you know, side check them. And on some of these JATCO units, this is a JATCO, a Japanese transmission company, uh, 
this planet right here on some units, the pins, they uh, start wobbling off a little bit, wearing out. And the first unit that, if you're a transmission rebuilder, you remember the F22A, the F2A, the, the one that came out on the, on the early, early maxima, like a 90, to like 92. All right, so we take the snap ring off. Let's check this frictions. These frictions here, they look in good shape. Go ahead and put these out of the way. Now here on this snap ring, you, you're going to have to mark uh, where the opening goes. It has like a little hook on one end. You see it has a hook in two ends. Put an X right here. And here's the other opening. Put an X right here. You get the snap ring off. This one here holds the sprag. Sprag or one-way clutch. The ratchet type, type sprags, they call them a mechanical dials. Snap things in here pretty good. I'm using the wrong screwdriver for this thing. It's coming out. There we go. Here we see, we have one hook here, another here. Let's go ahead and take this other planet out. And it has a, a hub, same thing here. You will want to get your feeder gauge as well and check the, uh, the clearance on the pinions. Frag is down there. This is the piston here, the one that was holding there. And this was was making it a little bit of tension on the snap ring. This is our uh, retainer for our return spring. Here's our low reverse frictions. These are and, and as always. Uh, the wave it goes towards the uh, return spring, but then we have a crack here, and that's everything on this unit on this side. And we have another hooked uh, snapper here that actually comes out right here in this location, right here. So just make sure that you put it in wherever it comes out, get the sprag out of the way. So far, it looks it looks kind of normal, you know what's going on here. Uh, I'm still waiting for him to uh, a piece of sprag just fall off. For him to send me the uh, trouble codes and say he wrote him down, I hope he did. Uh, this will give us a direction, some sort of uh, direction to see what what's going on in this unit. If it was just shifting hard, he probably has a speed sensor code. If that's what it does, especially the vehicle speed sensor, it will still shift. Uh, it would actually upshift for one time, and then uh, after it upshifts that one time, it sees no vehicle speed sensor signal. Uh, it starts shifting really, really hard on the upshifts and the downshifts. So that's probably, if we don't find anything else wrong with this thing, that's probably what's going on. Now there are some other electrical issues with this transmission. Uh, they do give you uh, solenoid problems. Another common issue with uh, solenoids, and that's a valve body problem and solenoid problem, that when it's cold, sometimes it won't shift into reverse. You let it warm up, and uh, then you have good reverse. And on some of them, you have good reverse and good first, but it will not upshift until it warms up. That's a solenoid or and a valve body problem. Let's go ahead and check our forward clutches here. This is our forward clutches. Uh, they look normal. They're not burnt. They are just used. But they're not worn out like the reverse clutches that I showed you at first. Those reverse clutches are 
are kind of scraped off or like if you get some sandpaper and start sanding those clutches off, that's the way it looks. All right, get your little drum out of the way. We're going to go ahead and uh, start disassembling the front part of the unit. You're going to see the two speed sensors that are in there, what I was talking to you about. And this is the reason you want to put all three, all three speed sensors new. Even if you don't find much wrong with the unit, you put it back together and uh, you do something to the valve body, change some solenoids or whatever, you want to make sure that you put those three speed sensors on there. Because if you don't, you're going to have some issues. Tilt it this way. Go ahead and pry this thing up a little bit. Get our bell housing off. Start prying. It has two guide pins and sometimes they get uh, rust on them. And it makes it a little bit difficult to get it out. Here's our differential. Just make sure that these things here that look like synchronized, so make sure you, do, you don't lose them. He took the hubs off, you know, where the axles go into. He probably didn't have the socket. You know, uh, if they are removable. You take the bolts off and you take the axle out. He probably didn't have that socket. He just removed this thing. Took the axles out like normal axles. All right, there's another seal here. It's right here. Am I getting this on camera? Yeah. The little seal right here, not all of them have it. There's two types on, of seals here. Once you get your overhaul kit, you're going to have two types of seals. And they are different. This goes here. Jaguars don't have the seal. There's nothing here. But whenever on Volkswagen, there's two types of uh, seals that go he that go here. Uh, you gotta pay attention when you get it out. The legs are different. There's a, there's a, it's a different configuration. I can't remember exactly what it is. I think it's the length of the legs or the width of it. But both of them come in the kit. Whenever you do an overhaul kit on one of these, so uh, just make sure that you don't throw it away and you match it up before you do anything else. It does not take a seal here, but what I like to do here, I get a little bit anaerobic uh, gasket maker. You know, I use this uh, Loctite 518. It's a case-to-case -case gasket maker. I just dab a little bit. It's for lubrication, you know, for the differential. I just dab a little bit and stick it on here or stick it on here with my finger to create a seal so we won't, you know, lose any uh, fluid. Let's get this thing out of the way. All right, filter is internal. Filter cannot be changed unless you pull the transmission out and you come this far, you can just take the bell housing off, change the filter if you want to. Now, if you want to change all three speed sensors, you don't have to, you just have to take the back cover off and uh, take the speed sensor out and, you know, change it, put the cover back on and then take the bell housing off and you can take this uh, two speed sensors off just by removing the bell housing and the differential. 
Here's the transfer gear. Transfer gear is going to come out once I remove this pump. Basically, most of the frictions are in the back. So this is our filter. Has a little gasket here. This is our pump. Let's take a shaft off. The shaft comes out that way. Take our turbine shaft seal, remove it. You know, like your normal 4L60s, you have an O-ring here for the, your lockup clutch. Take that off. Remove the shaft. You have two sealing rings here. Make sure they're good. Here's our pump gasket. It's kind of like metal type pump gasket. Go ahead and take our transfer gear off. There we go. This is where our underdrive section is. Here's the sun gear. Sun gear comes off. I'll get it off in a minute. I want you to look at something here. Here's one speed sensor. Some of you just came off. <laughs> here's another speed sensor. Now, here's our band, a, a servo. We have a band in here. We have the anchor. Now, if you take the anchor bolt off, the band is going to come off and uh, it's going to come out of position and you're going to lose reverse. Go ahead and take this off. Now this band has a lot of friction material on it. I mean, it's kind of thick. But the problem with this band, you start having a slipping in reverse and start having some other issues. The problem with this band is where on the apply point, and I, I've said this before in some other videos, the apply point gets wear off, and actually you can see from here to here, it's kind of like a like a little ramp there's nothing in the tip and then it starts coming up you can probably adjust the servo uh, it has some adjustment on it uh, but I just leave the adjustment alone and I install a new band now it looks new from the rest of the surface it looks good here's the anchor points but this anchor points here it still has a lot of friction on it the problem is where where the servo uh, pushes the band for apply this is where it wears out. There's our two speed sensors, the other two speed sensors. You have to uh, uh, replace them. And I mean, it, it is a must. This is where our transfer, this is our transfer gear. Uh, that goes to this gear and then to our differential. Uh, this is our underdrive section here where the underdrive drum goes. This is very common to fill, this one right here. This is, the, this, is, this is actually your vehicle speed sensor. So to get to your vehicle speed sensor, this is what, exactly what you have to, have to do just to get to that speed sensor. Let's go ahead and check these clutches here. And these clutches, they look in good shape. These also look in good shape. They look okay. I mean, they're brown like this, kind of darkish because they're old. But they are not burn up. And I hate to do this, but I mean, I'm going to have to talk to him real good and see what he wants to do. And this is just a for sale car, so it's hard to get this car lots and uh, whatever, you know, to try to fix him right. Uh, but the good thing is, is there's no warranty involved. The vehicle works, it works. It comes back, you make more money. Some of them will want some warranty, maybe like 30 days or whatever. But you really have to talk to these guys and say, hey, you know what? It's on you. All right. Let's go ahead and disassemble our pump. It's a 5mm Allen socket. 
Out of the wrench. Here's our pump, and as always, like I've always uh, tell you, you know, I was showing you on some other on some other videos. Whenever, whenever you separate the pump body from the pump uh, uh, cover, always before you take the the pump gears off, mark them, scribe an X on them, especially the one in the middle. The drive pump gear because it is very important some of them will have a uh, taper on one end where the torque converter goes in you know that's ease of assembly you spin in the converter to get the converter on the transmission and that helps you this one here looks like it's the same on both sides so it really doesn't matter but sometimes it depends on the wear of the pump um, of the pump gears and if you put let's say the out outward uh, pump gear upside down once you put it on there it's gonna probably you know lock the the gears and it won't turn also some of the uh, units like the Mercedes 722 sixes and 7229s uh, the the bottom part of the of the pump gear uh, has a taper on it and that taper needs to go uh, down you know like on the Mercedes units so it is very important whenever you uh, disassemble one, any unit it doesn't matter what it is, unless it's a vein type unit. I mean, a vein type unit, uh, it only goes in one way. You cannot put it uh, backwards because they have that uh, uh, rotor guide, the plastic rotor guide. Anyway, so here it is. I'll probably do an update video on this, you know, with the trouble codes, and uh, I'm not going to film uh, assembly on this thing, but here's actually our sun gear came out. That's our sun gear. Goes on top of uh, this reduction uh, drum here. That's a reduction band. Uh, it's the same concept as the Toyotas. Toyotas call it underdrive. Uh, this is called the uh, reduction band. And uh, it's just terminology from different manufacturers. But it's almost the same thing. And uh, I know that I've done a lot of teardown videos and I just want you to get you familiar with uh, how the unit you know looks inside. Uh, whenever you go in it, I mean all the different terminologies. Uh, you know, like uh, Volkswagen will call it uh, K1, K2, which is clutch one, clutch two, or whatever. V1, V2. Uh, domestics, you have forward, you have coast, you have low reverse, and I mean the concept is the same. It's, it just uh, depends on how it is supplied. That's the way I look at transmissions. Uh, to me, they're all the same. And I think that's why, I mean, it's kind of easier for me to just find the problem and fix it. All right. Let's go ahead and take this cover off right before we end the video. So I was about to stop it, but let's take this cover off. This is just the cover, and then it has the snap ring on the servo. Like I said, the band can be adjusted, but why try that? You're just going to cause more problems down the road. It'll probably work maybe, what, one week or two weeks. There's a gasket and an O-ring down here. That's why it's, uh, and it seems like it's never been removed before. See, so he's got a gasket and an O-ring. Keep those three bolts together. And here we see a snap ring that holds our servo piston in there. All right, very important. Again, I want to remind you guys, and I want you to tell, I mean, to pay attention that these sensors have to be replaced. They have to be replaced every time you disassemble one of these units. If you don't do that, then you're going to have fun tearing down these units. Again, Rework, I don't like rework. I don't know about you guys, you probably do. Uh, 
We have fun with transmissions, but we have fun with them one time. One time only. Three speed sensors, they're the same, same part number. You can get them from Cranstar, you can get them from the dealership. Uh, they are readily available. What I do with the other ones over here? Three speed sensors, they're all the same. All right, guys, well, my name is Hiram, and you know the drill. Press the like, click subscribe as well. And if you subscribe to my channel every time I uh, upload a video, you're going to be notified. So, I mean, so you guys can keep enjoying watching these things. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.